Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Alex. And today we're going to be looking at a brief roundup of the Eichmus show from 2018. Go through a few of the bikes that we saw there, some of the stuff that we found most interesting, really. I mean, we'll start things off with the Ducatis because something you really want to get into and start talking about. So we might as well start there. They revealed their 2019 lineup. So, I mean, they kick things off with the Multistrada 1260 Enduro, mm -hmm. the 998cc version of the Ducati V4 Superbike, so the Panigale V4R, which I'm sure you're probably itching to talk about, uh, large capacity Divel and Hypermotard, as well as the midside uh, Multistrada 950 Adventure Bike. So, happy days there. Exactly. So, the Panigale V4R is another basically. It's a bike as much MotoGP as you can get without it being illegal. So this is a bit of kit, very similar to the, uh, the V4 Speciale. However, I think it may be a bit more tame, but this thing has got all the features you want. Again, yeah. anti-spin, anti-wheelie, the lot, traction control. I can't wait yeah. to see They're it. Really that is the one I'm most buzzing about. So I'm glad we spoke about it yeah. first. But. It's a cool I mean, correct good. me if I'm wrong, is this the one that's got the fins on the front as well? Yep, so like they've actually the incorporated the Ducati winglets, um, which basically one thing Ducati had a, had a problem with was front end feel. So often enough in, on tracks, the front would tuck and you just lose it and slide out. Now, because they're a V4 engine, with the winglets, it puts more pressure on the front downforce, so it just gives them a lot more stability yeah. in the corners and on the straight as well, stops some wheeling. So. They really, really got this looking like a MotoGP bike. And again, this will not be road legal. It is too quick. The police cannot catch you. <laughs> so you can't turn up to the track on this and, and continue then going down. around <laughs> and then back home. Um, worth mentioning as well, there was the Monster 821 Stealth Special Edition. So mm. it's going to be the standard bike. It's going to have a sleek black paint job and some subtle Italian. 821cc, so. usual, yeah. Yeah, nice one there. Uh, next up, got a Suzuki Katana Colors. Very briefly, I mean silver black not really much else to again say crowd pleasers yeah it's really nice good that they brought the katana back so they were happy to see that and the pictures yeah. of it did look awesome yeah, yeah no that's good that's good that's good Three Yamaha. Yeah, so Yamaha have done a few bits. We've got the 3CT prototype. Uh, it's basically a great scooter, city commuter. Yeah. It's going to be a bit larger, very much like their X Max and N Max range. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the tech specs of it. Uh, they have got um, it's on the market with the Tri-City, yeah. that's the point of it. It's another three-wheeler. Um, it's not quite the Nick and it hasn't got the MT-09 engine in it, but it's not got a 125 yeah, exactly. engine. You know? So we'll find out more about that as it comes. Yeah, because um, they were quite quick to say that it's a prototype. It looks like the finished job, so you, mm -hmm. you, I can imagine that just going straight into production and coming out tomorrow, but they were quick to me. say, you know, it's a prototype. I think this is the answer for their, maybe we don't know how their Nick and sales have gone, to be fair. However, if people can ride this yeah. on a car license, that oh, may yeah, provide definitely. a few more purchases and people to go onto the Nick and... Um, the X Max Iron Max, so they've got an updated version of their Maxi Scooter range. Um, one, two, five, three hundred and four hundred CC models are yeah. available. Um, saw grey paint, so I think that's a really nice yeah, colour. Really smart. Branched away from their usual Yamaha blue uh, and night fluo colours, so a, a bit more on the. I'm not really sure about the name though, because X Max Iron Max, like. Oh, it's a bit much, isn't it? We cut it down a little <laughs> bit. But there we go. X Max was good enough, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes, we got. There you go, we've got the Husqvarna's next, you can cover that. Oh, actually, the Italia, the Dragsters. Forgot, I that's, forgot. Uh, that is well worth saying about, because of course the Dragster being an absolute legend back in the day, it was one, you know, two stroke, it's one where people customised it as they wanted, you know, they had the bits that they want, chop it off, put it different, it was, you know, the dream for a lot of people. So to see this being reborn and being brought out again is again, like, something that's great. So many manufacturers are doing now, we mentioned in another yeah. video, all the heritage ranges are yeah, coming out, exactly. modern classics being made, so I have no doubt that Italia are actually going to do really well with oh, these yeah, new drags. Definitely, so. definitely. It's going to come out as a 125 or a 200cc model, of course it will have to be four stroke to meet Euro 4, but still you get an Italia Exactly. So happy days of that. Um, as you say, no, Husqvarna Svartpilin 701 is something that we had here, so um, they revealed the Svartpilin 701 and it's joined the 401 and the Vip Pillin 401 and 701. So they're just re really going through this mm -hmm. basically. Uh, they're sticking to the same philosophy to join the other bikes in the range and basically it's going to give the same sort of raw experience to ride the older bikes but with the modern design, modern mm -hmm. technology, stuff like that. So they're really just refining this line that they brought out at the start of the year and renounced it from there. 
Um, the Bosch ABS Brembo brakes, quick shifter, ride by wire. It's always going to be the same high quality components. It's got, that they yeah, had no, before. it's got all the bits you need on it. It's not like it's a, a cheap bike with basic parts. You've got a fairly comprehensive yeah. package with this thing yeah, coming exactly. up. So, no, the pillar range is going to do really well. Yeah, and it's good and to see them all on display. Exactly. So, it's going to be one really worth looking out for. With that, the 701 Aero concept. I don't know if you might have seen it as well. They've got the fairing on the front now. Mm -hmm. It was the blue one that they had there, and it looked really smart, like really, cool. really nice. I mean, to be fair, it probably will be the exact same bike, but just with the, the fairing on the front, just giving it a bit more aerodynamics. So, you know, if, that, if that's what they've done, then fair play to them because it does look really nice. You might have seen this as well, the EE5 electric motorcycle. It's only going to be a little yeah. one. It's a 50cc sort of Equivalent. aimed at youngsters or short people bike. And uh, it's going to make about seven brake horsepower. So it's not going to be something to turn your nose up at. If, if you've got a kid on there whizzing around the track or something like that, it's going to be great. And it's electric? Yeah, all, all completely battery powered. And it says 80% in 45 minutes as a charge or full in 70 minutes. So that's... That's better than my phone. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> literally, you'd be whizzing around on that in no time. And they're saying end of summer 2019 for yeah. that one. So yeah, still so a bit of a wait, just under a year, but it gives people to save up for it. Because I imagine they'll be getting people excited early, so why not? It'll cost a few quid. So Triumph Limited Edition T120S. Oh, yeah. uh, so working again, well, once again, in Ace Cafe in London. Uh, they've come up with some new smart models of yeah. the T100 and T120. So we're talking £11,000 for this. But then when you go to buy one of the T ranges from Triumph, you expect to pay around the yeah. five digits anyway if you want a good oh, one. One of the top Especially one of these ones. sort of rare limited run ones. You know, they've had that partnership with Ace Cafe previously. Mm -hmm. So then to bring that back, you're going to be expecting to pay a little bit for it because exactly. you're getting a really nice bike here. Uh, they'll be joined in 2019 by 900 models. There'll be uh, So there's 900 models being built next year for the 60th anniversary Diamond Edition. But these ones, the T120S, yeah, so there's only going to be 1,400 built altogether, yeah. so they will be limited. And I don't know whether they'll be numbered, which will make them uh, more valuable. BMW doing their scooters again, their maxi scooters, which I am a fan yeah, of. Really I smart. think they look really nice. Yeah. They are expensive. We haven't even got a price for this one, but this is a C400 GT. This is going to come out in 2019. We're not sure when it's going to be exactly, whether yeah. it'll be with the 19 Reg bikes. Um, there's not really much to say on it. BMW have been around for years, and it's only in the last few years that they've started making these really comprehensive yeah. scooters. Um, but it's good to see them up on display again, usual ABS. It can be 34 brake single cylinder engine for a, a, for a, well, a city scooter, but bad at all, they are going to do a long range uh, touring version, which I right. think would be interesting for a scooter because there's only one which I can think that's really done that in Honda with their uh, Silverwing scooter. So. It's good to see them doing that. Uh, BMW got a few of the others, the R1250 GS uh, Adventures. We've already uh, been through the shift cam tech. Yeah. 30 litre tank, the usual stuff with the Rs. Uh, and they're bringing out an S1000RR 2019. So they are redefining yeah. their S1000 range. BMW doing bits as they have done for years. Nothing Yeah, uh, I mean, that bike as there. well, it looks incredible. Like the speed that is going to be coming out of the bike. I think it was. So What's the brake? Does it sound the brake? Uh, it says 203.8 brake horsepower. Oh, so you're going to be flying. That's, absolutely that's flying. more than the uh, the R1M actually. So that's yeah. worth noting. So it'd be interesting if Yamaha increased the R1M brake because all bikes seem to be bikes seem to be doing it now. The sports. Yeah, so exactly. I mean, it does even say here they're saving 1.3 kilograms from somewhere. I don't know where. And giving a new flex frame as well at the same time. 1.3 so, kilos, a lot to find from someone yeah, on an already so on, very on fast a sports bike. bike so, as well, you're, yeah. you're looking at something quite incredible there. Mm. Uh, worth mentioning, the F850 GS gets a bigger fuel tank and adds some more suspension. I don't know exactly where <laughs> yeah. they're fitting this yeah. suspension, but put more suspension. they're putting more suspension <laughs> in somewhere. Um, moving on to Kawasaki briefly here as well, there's the ZX6R and the Z400 that they were speaking about at the mm. ICMA show. Um, I mean, to be fair for myself, it's not really much to note. It's still going to be a great bike. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Z models sell really well. The Ninja models sell exactly. really well. They could probably just literally change the way that the Speedo's got the lettering on it and it would sell really well. So <laughs> The thing is, I think with, with the ZX6R, I think they've put quick shifter on it now. So when right. you're riding, you don't need to let off the throttle. And all. So as soon as you uh, change, you just keep it open. Um, the engine has a point five of a second cut out to allow the gear to, to change, change so you yeah. can keep it pinned so Oof. they've made a faster bike than they already had again all these manufacturers are just making super sports pretty yeah. much even faster so why not go for it i mean it's gonna have some new styling packs led headlamps assistance lift clutch as well so it's a perfect hooligan bike really can't <laughs> go wrong with that at all um 
There's a W800 coming in two forms as well, so a street and a cafe, and that's going to be aimed at the A2 market. It's capped at 47 mm -hmm. brake horsepower. So again, they're looking at the range here. They're not just always looking at the top end. They've got the, the nice So they pushed it to the 47 brake dot on, so yeah. people don't have to get them restricted. Yeah, nice. So I like what they've done with that. Literally out of the box, it's going to be 47 brake, and, and then you're done. So that's Big always fan. good. Uh, the Versus a hundred, uh, sorry, <laughs> Versus a thousand is also shown. It's going to be suspension that can be adjusted from your phone on an app, which is always nice and other electronic upgrades as well. So they're really just trying what they can here. Um, With that, don't adjust your suspension while you're riding. Yeah, nah. You will get in trouble. Nah, don't, don't do that at all. Um, the H2 SX SE Plus as well was also had a few tweaks. I mean, it says they got already the supercharger on there as, as it yeah. did anyway. And just a few tweaks just to push it a little bit further the out. H2 there. Special Edition Plus. I, I can't even wait to see that. I didn't know they yeah. could actually do any more with the H2R. Yeah. <laughs> so. They're pushing that right to the limit, so why not? Um, do you want to go through the KTMs? Yeah, KTMs as always. You've got the 790 Adventure now coming out. 790 yeah. Adventure R, that is. So again, the Adventure typically used to be the, the bigger range. That's what people would go for. So again, I think this is an introductory bike to get them into the, uh, the 1290s, yeah. the, the Super Adventure R when it comes to it. Um, some good tech specs too. So we've got 73 brake horsepower. That's the same with the 690. Uh, sorry, that's the 690 SMC. With the Adventure R, it's just the 799cc LC8 uh, engine. So yeah. that's fairly standard. The SMC 60R, as I was saying, 73 brake, uh, brake 42.5 foot to pounds per torque. However you say, I can get my words out then. And they've also got the Enduro R, ah, the yeah. same electronics, uh, chassis upgrade as the SMCR, but more aimed at off-roading. So we know our KTM have been like, they were phenomenal in the racing world before they really put money into the road bikes. So yeah. it looks as though they've got settled in the road. They'll start putting more money into off-road bikes again. And I have no doubt they'll work. It always, always does. Oh yeah, them. absolutely. I did hear murmurs as well that they took away one of their ranges here when Husqvarna released their range because of course they're mm -hmm. sister companies so they've now brought the bikes back out not to compete with Husqvarna but because keeps, they, they were just missing something there, yeah so and it keeps people interested as well because yeah. it's not like they're worried about losing sales on either one because it probably all goes to the same place at yeah, the end of exactly. the day um, Royal Enfield concept uh, KX oh, Bobber that, yeah that looks mean that, that's really in nice. it there's so just mean. not really much more you can say about it. Again, Royal Enfield yeah. are renowned for that sort of classic heritage styling oh, bike, yeah. but on a bobber version. I'm not sure what engine it's got. Uh, V-twin engine uh, from scratch. They've developed this bike in six months, so they've literally yeah. built it from the bottom. Design team really Complete well, redesign. Brilliant. Um, and it very much looks like a 1930s Royal Enfield, yeah. so it's going to be keeping people happy. Yeah, and exactly. it will keep people who used to ride them years ago, probably like me old man interested in yeah. these kind of bikes. I did hear it started as two, that they had an old one that they were redesigning mm. in a way, and a modern one that was just more taking influence. I think they then just decided why not just have that as yeah. the, See the combined one. different parts one. for each yeah. one and move them over. It makes sense, it does make sense. Now, uh, one other bit is MV Augusta on this page anyway. Uh, the Sulu, uh, Super Veloce 800. Um, it's a concept bike yeah. based on the F3 800. Uh, it's stunning. To it be honest, it's another I mean, Italian, wrong that at all. Italian designer, yeah. manufacturer that are putting out expensive, fast, good looking bikes. Yeah. I don't really know what else you want from MV, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, release a nice looking bike, you get your sorted. People so. will buy it. Absolutely. Uh, Malaguti here, they're being revived with the KSR group. So the KSR group are going to be revived really? with quite a few different uh, brands, as far as I know. And Malaguti are on that list. So they're being revived here. Um, the newest scooter is going to be in honour of their first ever one, so the Madison 300, although it doesn't look like the Madison 300, it's just called that, I think. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, Malaguti dropped out a bit after the two-stroke regulation yeah. in Euro 4, because I knew someone with a, a Malaguti two-stroke trials bike, and I tell you, that thing spat yeah. out. It was not yeah, healthy for imagine. the environment, so no, yeah, that would be it. Um, it apparently says here the UK may not see this bike in the showrooms and they're going to be more targeting the like European maxi scooter market and mm -hmm. sort of keeping it away from the UK as the sort of primary mm -hmm. focus. So whether or not we'll see it at all or just see a small batch of them. If they're knows. popular, a few years, they'll just start getting imported over anyway. So yeah. dealers may as well get yeah, them in exactly. when that starts happening. Uh, another one here is a Honda. Uh, of course, they released a lot of bikes and we will go, on, go through those in a moment. But briefly, they had a few 125 concepts and they're just really looking at sort of the adventure bikes and I think it was like a trial sort of motard looking bike. And it was a CB125M as a Street Fighter, uh, really small LED headlamp at the front, like really that. small, and it looked 
it honestly looks so nice. And it was a CB125X as like an adventure style bike. So quite interesting that Honda are looking at the 125 market thinking maybe we can do a bit more here. Maybe we can release an adventure bike, like a street fire I like bike. the street fire. You yeah. do not see many of those anymore. The only time you see them is when someone's ratted out an R1 and taken the fairing yeah. off. So I'm glad that some no, manufacturers are thinking about making these yeah. in so the factory now. If it looks any way part of how it does now when it gets released if it ever gets released then they're, We're, they're on to something because, they're yeah. on something yeah uh prillia we'll go through those next i mean there's the rs4 rsv4 1100 factory and the rsv4 rr it's going to have new paint schemes and a track kit for the rr and the factory is basically going to be competing with the panigale Mate. v4 214 brake horsepower yeah. Secondary oil jet, new intake timing, longer fifth and sixth gear ratios, yeah, going 1078 cc engine. So that is just utter quality. Yeah. Um, they've got the u usual bits, the Akrapo Akrapovich racing exhaust, uh, carbon end can uh, specialist headers, uh, track ECU, yeah. Erlen shock stamper, NIX forks, uh, and obviously a carbon accessory yeah, kit as well. So these things are just pumped with it. So, yeah. so I had to take that off you. That's no, fair that's, enough. That's it's worth powerful. it on that one. Um, another one that really did sort of stand out here was the Kimco Super Next. Now, you might have seen this one yourself. It's an electric super bike from Kimco. It's right. going to be, wait for it, 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds, 0 to 155 in 10.9 seconds. They make That's an electric mad. bike that does 155 yeah. miles. And it's, an it's hour. a manual as well. So it's not just twist and go. It's not just, you know, twist and wait to go. You're still changing the gears. Really? So you're not even feeling like you're an uh, electric bike in that sense. Not many electric companies are doing that, yeah. actually, so it's interesting exactly. that Kimco, and of all people, are doing it. Yeah, it's, it's great to see. And Kimco, they did also say they're going to be providing an active acoustic motor. So not only is it going to feel like a manual bike in terms of the gear shifts and the way you're riding it, it's going to sound like it as well. I don't know how that's going to work because what sort of sat is it no. just going to be like a speaker that's just playing this out? I don't know. <laughs> but interesting to see how that ends up. Um, is there anything else really with that because it just it looks mind-blowing at the you moment you just needed those statistics yeah. to get people interested no that's it's about no it i mean it. that's it um so moving on to the hondas because there was a long list here and with <laughs> honda's way of naming bikes it was getting a bit complicated because it's just cb everything <laughs> i'll go through a few of them it was the cb 500 f and that's getting some light upgrades to make it a little bit more attractive and a four percent boost to power and torque in the lower end so the 3k 7k rpm can't really go wrong with that. A bit more power at the lower end. Everyone's happy. The CB500X is an adventure middle uh, middleweight. It's unveiled. Perfect for green laning, car park stunts. If you're doing that, you know, in your spare time, private areas, just don't, <laughs> don't do, do it. On, not on our books, obviously. <laughs> uh, the CBR1000RR Fireblade is just getting a load of different electronic changes. It's improving the import, uh, performance for the 2019 model mm -hmm. because a lot of owners said that they felt like the previous model was sort of holding them back a bit. You know, the restrictors were kicking in, the like, the nanny things were kicking in and stopping the bike really reaching its Going, upper yeah. limit. So they're they felt, fast as it is. Yeah. So, I mean, they've just looked at the electronics and stuff like that. So you'll get a bit more of a feel of the bike. So it's just you and the road there. So, you know, be careful on that one. <laughs> so the uh, CBR500R is getting an engine upgrade for improved power and torque. Happy days. The CB650R is a new bike that they revealed and it's a nice upgrade for the styling and delivery for a previous bike which was, I think it was a CB650R, no, CB650F. See, this is where all the CBs just get really complicated because it's just, bring some more names in, I say. Um, they're getting a bit of like weight reduction, six kilograms is lost. Little restyles, it's got some Nissin calipers, shower forks, new wheels, looking great. I don't know where all these manufacturers are finding ways to take six kilograms now for yeah. example out of a so bike that is ridiculous go back to the drawing board and think we well, don't need that don't need that don't yeah, need it's that got no wheels on it but six and a half kilograms yeah, it's lighter. Lighter. it'll go quicker <laughs> um it's just going to become a new of improved 650r really so happy days there um and lastly it was a cbr 650r which was once the cbr 650f and that's going to get the same mechanical upgrades as the cb 650r but has some fairings on improve the engine fueling and you get a higher rev limit happy days 5% power boost at peak revs with an improved torque curve. So they've still got six kilograms through that uh, frame tank and other changes as well. So they're really just looking at redesigning a lot of their bikes and just... They seem to have done the whole range to be fair. Yeah. A lot of these are the middleweights. So granted, they've got the fire blade in there. 
they're going to do bits to that because oh, yeah, everyone definitely. else is doing bits to their super sports. But yeah. a lot of it is the middle middleweight, so it would be interesting to see how popular they become. They're selling them anyway. But Yeah, definitely. Um, there was a brief one as well on the SH300i so for scooter fans out there. Uh, a selectable torque control and smart key control for the top box. Just easy bits. Happy days. ABS, LED lights and a bit of a facelift. So happy days. Facelift. Uh, and from the P uh, Piaggio group, the Moto Guzzi V85 TT, that was displayed there. Yeah. We don't know too much about it yet, but again, fairly pretty bike, crowd please with Moto Guzzi. Uh, the Vespa Electrica was shown oh, and yeah. it looked quality. It really did. Like we'd seen some pictures of it anyway with the blue uh, trim and the yeah. orange trim. Um, the GTS is, there's the latest MP3 300 model as well, yeah. so uh, the lower end of the MP3 range is getting a bit of a, a bit of a lift. Uh, the GTS update, we've got a 23 brake horsepower uh, engine now, which is only one brake more than where it was. Yeah. You probably won't notice it, but again, there's a bit more to it. There's a Super Tech with HPE, which is their high performance engine, which I believe they tested out by releasing it on the MP3 500 business ASR right. last year. That was their first HPE engine, which they used. So putting it on the GTS now, I imagine on the 300 model, might go down quite yeah. well. I think this does now become their most sort of performance focused scooter. Yeah. So it's going to be the most powerful scooter at least. So. I mean, they put some uh, percentages on here. We've got 12% more power and 18% more torque, which is nothing to turn your nose up at at all. Um, TFT display, LED lights, yeah. all that stuff, which they've been integrating into their bikes yeah. for years. Um, what else have we got? Um, the HP engine, they, they are just saying yeah. it's better fuel consumption as well, besides the more power. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Vespa <laughs> it's worth mentioning this one as well. Vespa Piaggio, they didn't do it at Eichma, however they have released their kids range. So they've got some really small little pocket bikes which they've now released. Um, I think they look great. Yeah, they're pretty they cute, aren't they? Great. I think it's the stabilizers on there as well. Happy days. Coolie. Well, that's about all we had coming from Eichma. That's, uh, we've exhausted the list. and. We hope we did it quick enough for you. There was a lot to take yeah, in I with mean, that. You could probably go on for hours because there was so much there. I mean, so many different manufacturers that you haven't really heard from before at all. Loads of electric bikes, loads of stuff that we just wouldn't be able to cover. Otherwise, we'd be here for another hour. Exactly. But, you know, it was a lot of stuff to go through. But really big show. Exactly. Let's see what we got after Motorcycle Live. We'll see you after that. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Cheers. That threw you all off, didn't it? Oh, that geez. threw you all off. <laughs>